Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with Brian Baker. How are you, Jess? Good, how are you? Amazing. Living the dream. <laughs> Always. And today we have Dr. Patel with us. Hello, mm -hmm. thanks for having me back. I'm making a return. Yeah, making another return here. Movement Disorder Specialist from Ohio Health. Yep. Thank thanks you for again for coming on. Thank you. So today's topic is quite exciting, and something we actually talked about before. Oh is Botox. Oh, I thought so. No, it's not what you're <laughs> probably thinking. But this is an interesting topic um, because we actually just learned more about it from you and how Botox can help people living with Parkinson's um, depending on certain uh, symptoms that they feel and, and how it can help. So wanted to, to start with that. Yeah. I, I, Did you get it done? No, oh, okay. Never, but again, I think we tried, but the insurance denied it. Oh, we'll get to that topic. <laughs> yeah, <too>. we'll <laughs> but so tell tell us like Botox and how and Parkinson's. Like, what have you done? What are you seeing? Right. So I use so Botox is a type of uh, botulinum toxin, which is a medication that we use that helps relax muscles. So people who get it for cosmetic reasons, it works on wrinkles and things like that mm -hmm. by just sort of relaxing the muscle. And what we know with Parkinson's is Parkinson patients get, you know, their muscles get tight in various different ways. There are mm -hmm. Parkinson patients who have, um, you know, you'll notice your toes start curling. Um, they can become very painful, mm -hmm. especially at nighttime. Um, and that is a form that happens to some patients when they're peaking as a type of dyskinesia on medication or even whenever they're coming off medication. Um, and I like Botox as a treatment because it's so localized compared to taking a pill, mm -hmm. right? When you take a pill, it affects your entire body. Um, but whenever you're injecting someone with, with uh, botulinum toxin, you're getting to, you're just injecting that specific muscle, that area. You're not getting any sort of systemic side effects and things like um, lots of different reasons to use Botox in, in Parkinson patients. Um, dystonia, which is just a fancy medical word for abnormal tone. Mm -hmm. So Parkinson patients can have abnormal abnormal tone in various different muscles. Abnormal tone. Tone. What do you? What's that? So mean? like oh. it, your muscles just get tighter. Oh, okay. So and like right now, like the, my front, the front of my leg is just like super tight yeah and you you may actually get like where you're at, literally your your toes may start curling yeah. in underneath your foot which could hurt and become very painful uh -huh. people's feet can literally actually start turning inwards or outwards huh. um and so if you're starting to see that um you know yes you have to work with insurance and get insurance approval um, but we inject those muscles. So what's happening right now is because of the abnormal dopamine levels, the muscles are overactive. Okay. And they're working too hard and becoming too tight. Mm -hmm. And so by injecting Botox, which will then relax the muscle, it'll kind of get it back to from overdrive to sort of normal. How long does that last? It, once you get the right amount and the right dose, it should last up to three months. What do you mean right amount, right dose? Is it like a trial and error thing? It's sort of, so rule of thumb for me always is start low, go slow. Uh -huh. So you get approval for a certain amount of injections. And there's standard um, in terms of in certain muscles, this is probably the amount that you need. Um, and we start with that. When I'm injecting a patient for the first time, I tell them, look, generally speaking, it'll take about five to seven days to start working. Okay. You should continue to see improvement until about week 10, Week eight to week ten, you'll peak. By that point, you may start wearing off. By week twelve, you come in and get reinjected. Hmm. Um, everything with with botulinum toxin is temporary. Uh, if you do experience a side effect, it will go away. Just like the benefit wears off, if you get a side effect, it wears off. Nothing is permanent with it. Um, so you have to come in and get reinjected every three months. You can't get injected sooner than that. Okay. So what had happened was, whenever botulinum toxin when it first came out, people were getting injected. Frequently, um, there was no standard of how frequent you should get injected, and what was happening was people were starting to become, starting to develop antibodies, and becoming resistant to Botox. Oh, and then so whenever you, whenever we were able, when we realized if we spread it out to just once every three months, um, then people weren't developing antibodies, and you can't even, you, we can't even test for antibodies anymore because it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, once we figured out once every three months is sort of the protocol that everyone okay. should be on. So. 
So what all body parts or muscles can you use Botox for? I mean, we talked a little bit about feet and toes. So, what, I mean, so feet, toes, I use it um, for people who are maybe they're clenching their jaw too much or they're having dyskinesias in their mouth and moving around their mouth too much. Um, very popular in Parkinson patients is drooling. So a lot of Parkinson patients will have uh, a lot of drooling that could happen. Um, and so you inject the salivary glands. Really? Um, and I use a different type of botulinum toxin for that one. Um, I use myoblock, which is a type, uh, different type uh, that I, I personally feel works better in glandular tissue. So you use it um, for in your salivary glands here and here. That will take care of saliva um, for a decreased drooling. Um, tremor. I've used it for people who've, um, when your hand is going, yeah. so there have been studies that have showed what happens as people are shaking so much. Um, and so what's happening is the muscles, your muscles in your forearm and your um, right here, they're becoming, they're overactive and they're mm -hmm. both contracting at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you relax some of it, you now are calming down some of that tremor. Obviously, one of the biggest side effects of that is if you relax it too much, your hand will become weak. <laughs> <laughs> but everything is Botox is temporary. So if it does become weak, it's not going to be like that permanently. It will wear right. off. Um, so, but that is very, you know, you have to be very precise of where you inject. Um, I use a machine, a little portable EMG machine that pretty much is like static goes off when I know I'm in the right muscle and it tells me I'm in the right muscle because in your arm you have layers of muscle. So you want to mm -hmm. make sure that whichever one you're injecting, you're injecting the right one. Do all movement disorder specialists do this? Um, or can all of them can do uh, in, use botulinum toxin for injection. Um, people are trained in different ways. So I train to use EMG machines. Some people don't use machines at all. They just are able to do it without a machine. Some people um, have recently learned how to do it with ultrasound machines hmm. um, where you could physically see the muscle. Um, and so you could do it with that. Um, so, um, you know, injecting the neck, other popular area. People have head tremor. You could have a dystonia where your head is turning one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a popular reason to get um, botulinum toxin injected. But how do you say it again? Botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin. Yeah. Not say that. Not Botox. <laughs> so there's Botox, there's Xeomin, there's Dysport, um, are the three that are the type A, and then the one type B, which is Myoblock. What does that mean? Type and a, Myoblock is the brand name. So they're, it just depends on where they, where in the neuromuscular junction do they work. Okay. And so they all have their own little unique twist on it. Type B, whenever people were developing antibodies, um then they were they developed type b so that it would counter the antibodies hmm. um, but now we don't have antibodies anymore so people you could use it for various different things so why did so brian said he had issues with insurance but why would that be if it's known to um it right. is all a matter of it, it really is you have to it's uh, there are certain types that are fda has them for certain specific criteria oh. so it's it, it all is some of it's based off of um you know categorizing the actual dystonia itself um you have to use that term mm -hmm. uh, that this is a limb dystonia or a toe dystonia uh, that's happening um and so if you're able to use those certain wordings with insurance companies mm -hmm. to to get it approved, um, it goes back and forth depending okay. on the company. It almost seems like, just in my own personal opinion, they they declined everything the first time. Yeah, I mean that's they, true. I mean and they, they declined it, all it, my stuff. Yeah, in the yeah. Beginning. it's unfortunate because it makes more work for the doctors. They have to go back and justify why. They yeah, need the you're, we're always going back and forth. So they may say, oh, they recommend an oral medication, but okay. then you have to go back. Well, oral medications are going to cause certain side effects that you don't get with injections and so you're better off with injections um and so it's it's that back and forth mm -hmm. and we know whenever i do it for migraine patients they have to have met the rejection will come if they don't meet certain criteria you have to have had a certain number of headaches a certain number of migraines you have to have tried a certain number of medications first uh before an insurance company will pick up covering botox for migraine yeah. um but um there so you have to kind of go play the play the game um what type of like how many i guess how many like a number of patients let's say you've you've 
done Botox on for Parkinson's? Like, do you, have you, oh, do, do, you do a lot? Yeah, I mean, I have a dedicated weekday, every week, a weekday clinic for just Botox injections all day long. And what, how, like, what, how did, what's their, um, what's their feedback? I mean, once you get it to the right dose and right amount, they're, they're there every three months. They oh. come in and get their injections. I was kind of like, so would I be able to, like, I guess it would probably have to be more in-depth conversation, but like, would I potentially be a candidate because I have so much stiffness in my front, what's I that would, called? What's that? Muscle? Toe? No, my front, my, the leg, my leg. Toe. Shin? Shut up. Your shin. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, like your tibial like anterior the, yeah. is probably tight and then, um, and that may be causing your foot to turn one way or another. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I would think so. It's like, I, you know, maybe I could be like a see. test case on here and get it done. Because, yeah. I mean, like, I literally, that's it, like... It'd be like my DVS. We could check on yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, seriously, because, like, that, like, when you say it relieves people of the symptoms, is it, like, completely relieve you? Of, like... Yeah, and people yeah. they say, like, especially with the with the feet, it's it's like okay, I'll take a few days, but I'm better. I'm so much better, hmm. and um, it may take a couple of months in terms of getting the right dose. Yeah. Or you, you know, in the beginning, they patients may come back and tell me, okay, that worked, but I still had some symptom. I know the next time I could inject more. Oh, okay. Uh, or it worked, but it only lasted me for two months, okay. and by third before the third month, I was having symptoms again. Okay, I know I could inject you more the next time. I can't do it before three months, but getting that feedback from patients helps me so that um, I could give you more next time. Um, and then I need that feedback also to go back to the insurance company to say, hey, you need to keep approving this. This is working. This is what the patient's okay. telling me. Or I need more. Mm -hmm. They may approve a certain amount. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I reach that max and people are still having discomfort, it's not lasting, mm -hmm. I need to ask for more. As long as I'm getting that feedback from patients, and I could go ahead and ask more. So, one of a um, a comment that was left on from one of the podcasts, somebody asked about um, Parkinson's and drooling. So, I think it's really interesting that you bring up Botox for drooling. Is there like, like, I guess when is it when is it up to the MDS to tell a patient like let's try this versus us knowing like or knowing what to ask like so yes yeah, so that's I mean drooling is part of your what we call Parkinson's review of systems a standardized questions that we ask all Parkinson's patients at every mm -hmm. follow-up um, you know sleep falls exercising dizziness, constipation, drooling, mood, memory, hallucinations, these sort of things you ask at every visit. And so mm -hmm. when a patient says, yes, they're drooling or this is bothersome to the point where I'm, uh, yeah, drooling on the pillow, I'm, I'm fine, I could deal with that. But if you're carrying around a handkerchief all day long mm -hmm. and constantly having to wipe your mouth, uh, you know, to me, that's, um, I use botulinum toxin as the first go-to. Uh, the oral medications to for drooling, causes a lot of side effects it can make you really dry it can make you confused it can make you constipated which mm -hmm. parkinson patients are already <laughs> already have that already so, have right so um why even bother with that so i i don't bother with anything else besides injections for drooling so again we're, from our previous segment we talked about the standardized or la not not a standardized type of care is botox and i would say the actual name of it but i can't it's too long. Um, is that used as yeah. a standard of care? Very much so. Okay. Yeah. Because I haven't. I mean, I don't. I don't know anybody except uh, my one friend or Carrie. She was on here um, in Philadelphia. She just got it done on her toes, but she's just a weekend, so she's still waiting to see how it okay. goes. But um, I don't really hear many people doing it now that you've had that. Well, I also think, I think patients don't. Uh, they may not even realize something like, oh, this, it's my Parkinson's and I just deal with it. Mm -hmm. And you may not have to. And yeah. I think some of that is um, is just, I, I get it from patients and they tell me, oh, yeah, they have been doing it for a while. He's like, oh, I've just been ignoring it. But now I think it's kind of getting bothersome. Okay. And so they, they may, it may be underreported. Yeah. But when it is reported, I think that it's definitely a, 
it's a it's a nice treatment option for patients. Yeah. For maybe, sure. Maybe get some wrinkles done too. Yeah, I'm, saying, you... I'm 40 now. I might have to. You know, spring chicken. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thank you again for coming My on. My pleasure. This was a great topic, and I think yes. I'm going to do a test case. You should, so we can ask about yeah. you for like three. Do weeks you need now. anything done? Nope. Not I had like, DVS. I got it all done. <laughs> no. I need it all in one swoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but seriously, I, th- I think I might come in for for my leg, but yeah. Yeah. Thanks. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. In our last 30 seconds, I'll leave you with this. Um, Botox, while it is a brand name, I just can't say the longer name of it. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, Consult with your movement disorder specialist or your neurologist to see if Botox would be an option for you when it comes to stiffness, tightness, um, the rigidity rigidity that we experience. Um, It could be something that can relieve you of some of the discomfort that we feel on a daily basis. But as always, consult with your doctor and have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.